Hi, my name is Heather McKay, and I'm an occupational therapist and dementia care specialist. On behalf of Comfort Care and At Your Side Home Care, I'd like to thank you for listening and learning about Lewy body dementia. As you gather information about Lewy body dementia and find ways to apply it in your own life, I hope you'll share your knowledge and experience with friends, neighbors, your family members, and coworkers. In our short time together, I'll share information that I've collected along the way. In my own experiences working in home health, hospice, community-based practice, dementia care education, and caring for a beloved family member of my own, these are some of the things that I think everybody needs to know about Lewy body dementia. Whether you're thinking about your own brain or supporting people that you know living with the disease. So help me spread the word. Here's some things that I'll share with you today. I want to see some of the science behind Lewy body dementia and take a look at some hallmarks of the condition, like what to look for and what makes Lewy body dementia distinct from all the other types of dementia. We'll examine the journey of Lewy body dementia. In other words, how things progress over time. And then I'll share some helpful home care strategies that have worked for families and professionals to create better days that are more meaningful, safe, and pleasant for people living with Lewy body dementia and their caregivers. Now keep in mind, strategies include things to try and things to avoid. Imagine you're sitting with a friend at our kitchen table talking about dementia caregiving. I mean, after all, 16 million Americans are helping a friend or family member living with dementia. In fact, the majority of dementia care is done unpaid by families and friends. I wouldn't be surprised if your friend asked you this question. What's the difference between Lewy body dementia, dementia, and say something like Alzheimer's disease? Well, it's a common question. I answer all the time in presentations, consultations, and kitchen table talks like these. Let me share with you the quick explanation that I use that really gets heads nodding. See, dementia is an umbrella term. My hands just automatically go up when I explain that. Because with dementia written way up high, it's the category of diseases. And there are all kinds of different types underneath the umbrella. Here's what really gets heads nodding. I say, dementia is a word like cancer. See, most people understand that cancer is an umbrella term. Whether they say it like that or not, they understand that cancer is a category of diseases and there are all these different types underneath the umbrella. Most people know skin cancer, lung cancer, breast cancer, colon cancer, others. They also know that skin cancer is different from lung cancer, but they're both cancer. That's the way the dementia vocabulary works, too. With dementia written way up high, well, underneath that umbrella, there are all different types of dementia. We've got all these types from Alzheimer's disease, vascular dementia, Lewy body dementia, frontotemporal lobe dementia, and the list goes on. Lewy body dementia is different from all the rest, but they're all dementia. Now, don't be surprised if at the kitchen table, your friend says, thank you. You're the first person to explain the words in a way that is easy to understand and remember. Now you can zero in on that particular type of dementia, Lewy body dementia, and share some more information. Now, like people often ask me, Heather, how did Lewy body dementia get that name and how does it work? If we look at some science behind Lewy body dementia, we got to talk about Dr. Louis. Dr. Louis was a German doctor working around the turn of the century, shortly after Dr. Alzheimer published his work about Alzheimer's disease. Dr. Louis discovered some patients with dementia had different symptoms. These people had trouble moving their bodies. It seemed similar to Parkinson's disease, but not exactly the same as that condition either. Dr. Louis's patients had hallucinations and memory loss, along with that difficulty moving. And when he looked at the brain tissue closely under the microscope, 
he discovered unusual misfolded proteins. He named those misfolded proteins Lewy bodies. That's how this type of dementia got its name. So you may read about dementia with Lewy bodies or Lewy body dementia. As time goes on, those abnormal proteins, Lewy bodies, build up in the brain. The protein deposits disrupt brain signals and lead to problems with thinking, movement, memory, behavior, and sleep. The Lewy Body Dementia Association is a fabulous resource for more information about this condition. But Lewy Body Dementia is not a rare disease. It affects an estimated 1.4 million individuals and their families in the United States. However, many medical professionals and families are still not as familiar with this type of dementia. Just like all the other types of dementia, Lewy body dementia is progressive with no cure yet. As this disease progresses, the person will need help in every aspect of life as the brain changes. In the absence of a cure though, millions of healthcare providers and family caregivers focus on treatment to maximize skills and abilities in every stage and enhance quality of life for everybody involved. Let's name a few hallmark signs or characteristics of Lewy body dementia because your friend at the kitchen table may be wondering how to recognize the signs of Lewy body dementia. The most common symptoms of Lewy body dementia include impaired thinking, such as loss of executive function, which means planning, processing information is hard, memory loss, and the ability to understand visual information. Fluctuations in cognition, attention, and alertness are also common. Problems with movement, including tremors, stiffness, or slow and shuffling walking. Visual hallucinations, like seeing things that aren't there, are common for people with Lewy body dementia. So are sleep disorders, such as acting out one's dreams while they're asleep or sleepwalking. Behavioral symptoms of Lewy body dementia include depression, apathy, anxiety, agitation, delusions, and feeling paranoid. Changes in autonomic body functions like blood pressure control and temperature regulation and this bowel and bladder function also change with Lewy body dementia. Lots of caregivers I've met describe the order of changes or the path of Lewy body dementia as patchy. They would say, my husband has some skills that are as good as ever, like his short-term memory, for example, seems to be better than most, but other skills like decision-making, moving his body, sleeping, Things that he always used to do are harder for him now. As time goes on, that combination of losses and preserved strengths trends downward. But for a long time, he has this patchy mix of things that he does just fine alongside things that he can no longer do on his own. The timeline of Lewy body dementia is a complex decline. Now it's slow in some and quick for others. There are three common presentations of Lewy body dementia, each starting a little differently. In some cases, it starts with that movement disorder, leading to this diagnosis of Parkinson's disease often, and then later development of the dementia. Early on, these people may experience the Parkinson's symptoms, including the stiffness, that freezing of motion, that, that gait and balance issues, or, and the tremors. But a second presentation, another group, starts with the cognitive or memory disorder, which may actually be mistaken for Alzheimer's disease initially, but over time, the diagnosis can be clarified as Lewy body dementia. Early symptoms include problems speaking, 
possibly a whisper or their voice is just absent. Significant variations in attention and alertness, along with visual and spatial problems, falls and fainting. For the third group, Lewy body dementia starts with the behavioral symptoms, which could include the hallucinations, delusions, restlessness, or acting out the dreams while they sleep, known as a REM sleep disorder. For these folks, the behavioral problems and the diff difficulty with complex mental activities is, is characteristic. Regardless of the initial symptom, all three presentations of Lewy body dementia develop very similar cognitive, physical, sleep, and behavioral challenges. Eventually, people living with Lewy body dementia become more susceptible to pneumonia and other infections, which are common causes of death. The average life expectancy for someone living with Lewy, Lewy body dementia is five to seven years after a diagnosis. Now, I'm thinking of you and your friend at the kitchen table, and you're probably wondering, Heather, where's the good news? Well, the good news is this. Over years of research, people with dementia, families, and professional caregivers of all stripes have discovered effective strategies to improve life for the person living with the disease and their caregivers. Many of the most effective home care strategies don't involve a medicine. After all, there's no magic pill to fix dementia. So we call these non-pharmalogic approaches. For example, just seeing the world from the perspective of those with Lewy body dementia helps us create days that are more meaningful, safe, and pleasant for everyone. While the days can be long, working with someone's remaining strengths adjusting our own behavior, and modifying environments can help us create better days together. If you're caring for someone with Lewy body dementia, consider these strategies. First, it's helpful to give the person more time to think and speak and move. A gentleman with Lewy body dementia told me once he felt his brain was telling his body to move, but his body wasn't listening. Sometimes he needed more time to initiate his movement or to just get started speaking. Well, next, it's helpful to break down tasks into doable steps. One of the most common mistakes that I see is when caregivers just give too much information. I'm thinking of a caregiver who arrived to take her mom to an appointment, she greeted her mom in the living room and proceeded to just spill the whole day's agenda. She's like, hey mom, how you doing? Mom looks up, says, hey, good. She said, oh, I'm glad you got your shoes on because it's raining outside and we got to get around to that appointment. I'm going to take your walker in case we have to park far from the door, but I'll pull right up to the door and they'll have a wheelchair once we get to the doctor's office in case you have to go to another part of the building. Are you ready to go? <laughs> well, the caregivers in the uh, audience are just nodding their heads. You know what mom said. No, I'm not going anywhere. Now, it can, might feel unnatural to hold back some of that information, but breaking down the task into doable steps and putting those steps together may be the easiest way of getting out the door. Another strategy for creating better days is to follow a daily routine but be ready to flex. Here's what I mean. Have you ever heard a caregiver say, well, at our house, we need to accomplish our work um, in the morning because after lunch, my husband likes to rest for a couple hours. He'll read the newspaper, watch the news on TV, help me with dinner, and then we're eating with the early birds. That's a couple who's figured out the routine that works for them. And that predictable daily routine makes life easier for them both. When something unusual pops up, like an unpredictable chore in the afternoon or some evening outing, you know, that's a special occasion, why the caregiver knows her husband with dementia will find that difficult. So she allows for a little more time and anticipates that he'll need some more help. That's the key. Build in the routine 
and lean on it when possible, but caregivers be ready to flex because people with dementia just aren't as flexible as they used to be. Leverage the person's preserved skills in familiar activities, after all, it's still a use it or lose it proposition. For this group, promote good sleeping habits. Now, you might try to limit those daytime naps and caffeine afternoon if you, if you discover that helps, but also follow a nighttime routine. Since Lewy body dementia comes with lots of fluctuations, in the morning the person seems to be doing well and maybe later in the same day they need more help, it's helpful to pay attention to what the current care needs are and then gauge your support based on their current abilities. It may change day to day or hour to hour. Think outside the box and consider pet therapy for all its benefits for movement, communication, and socializing. Here's some more tips. Pair your verbal instructions with visual cues to provide you know, more information. The person with Lewy body dementia may understand your visual cues better than a long explanation. Try listening to their favorite music. Areas of the brain that understand music are preserved longer for many people with dementia, and music taps emotional memory, rhythmic movement. It even helps you put one foot in front of the other. Encourage movement and exercise in whatever way feels good to the person. Remember, healthy movement doesn't have to be fast or even on your feet. Slow walking or bending and stretching in a chair might be the just right challenge for you, and music can help. Provide supervision for safety. Communicate with empathy. Here's what I mean. It means focusing more on the feelings and less on the facts. For instance, if hallucinations are not upsetting to the person, just enter their reality. It's very scientific. I call it go with the flow. If the hallucinations are upsetting, well, calmly redirect by moving to a new location and changing the activity. Let me say a little bit more about that redirection technique. Because caregivers out there will back me up on this. It's easier said than done, am I right? A person with dementia can tell if you care about their problem or if you're sweeping it under the rug because they can hear it in the tone of your voice and see it in your body language. So take a deep breath, listen to their concern, and use empathetic words to point out their feelings. For instance, it sounds like you're missing your husband, or I can tell you're looking for something, or it seems like you see something scary once you've made an emotional connection and the person's listening to you, you can redirect their attention by changing the subject, changing locations, and changing activities. These steps can help shift the person's attention to something less upsetting. Redirection and distraction are proven effective strategies for managing challenging behaviors of dementia, but it takes practice. So don't give up. If your redirection doesn't work, pause, listen some more, and try to make that emotional connection before you change the subject. Because Lewy body dementia impacts movement and sleep, memory and thinking and reasoning and judgment, while avoiding some things can mean better days for the person and their caregivers. For instance, try to avoid arguing Caregivers, have you heard this phrase? You can be right or you can be happy. <laughs> it means letting go of some things for the sake of keeping the peace. And I know it's hard sometimes, especially with our closest loved ones. I've always said, if you can't argue with your spouse, who can you argue with? But I know that if my spouse could no longer reason the way he or she used to, then our arguments over the facts will end in stalemates. Have you ever felt the person with dementia pushing you into an argument? 
I mean, they're upset about something that you know to be untrue, so you push back. Have you noticed that as long as you're willing to push, they can push too? Well, that, my friends, is a stalemate. And it's more to do with the feeling of needing to be heard and wanting to be right. In this situation, there's only one person who can stop pushing. It's the person with a healthy brain. Caregivers, when you find yourself in a stalemate, and we'll all be there eventually, my best advice is simple. Take a deep breath and stop pushing. Correcting the person with Lewy body dementia can easily lead to an argument. But, I mean, we're not that different. Who likes to be made to feel stupid? None of us like that. So practice some alternative approaches that don't say to the person, you're wrong. You might say this, try this, and then show the person a better way. Or ask the person for their help, and then show them the correct first step. It all feels better than saying, that's not right. Avoid startling the person. After all, when understanding the situation is difficult for the person with Lewy body dementia, they can seem on edge or easily startled. Everything will be easier for you both if you can avoid scaring the pants off the person in the beginning of your interaction. Practice approaching the person from the front. Let them see you before you're in their personal space. Offer your hand to greet the person or just show them your open arms to invite a hug. It's more comfortable and safer way of beginning the interaction than swooping in from the side or from behind. Given the nature of Lewy body dementia, try to avoid rushing their movement. If something's upsetting on TV, the person with Lewy body dementia may have trouble teasing apart what they see on TV and what's happening to them. So try to limit all those stressful stories. Many families have told me about certain medications that worsen their loved one's hallucinations. So stay in communication with the doctor about that symptom of Lewy body dementia. Sometimes reducing medicines actually helps. Don't expect the person to do all they used to do, or at least the way they used to do it. Shifting your expectations can go a long way towards settling into a new normal. And finally, don't expect to do everything yourself. Caregiving is a team sport, so find your teammates. A final take-home message for today. The Comfort Care team is ready and willing to collaborate with you on strategies and solutions for your dementia care needs. People with Lewy body dementia have unique needs and can continue to live at home with support throughout its progression. Even an extension of six to 12 months at home can benefit people with Lewy body dementia and their families. Comfort Care understands the disease's progression and redesigns plans as our clients' needs change to help them live at home as long as possible and feel at home no matter where they live. Keep in mind, if you'd like more information about something you've learned today, feel free to contact your local Comfort Care office. For additional resources, support for family caregivers, and specialized home care for people living with dementia. Thank you 